G'day there, it's Sean here and this is a tech talk about custom color management for the Alexa 35. Now custom color management, well that is a new workflow we've developed to allow users to use their own display render transforms on set. Now a display render transform is basically the part of the look file which then converts the image from log C4 to whatever color space you need for the monitor that you have on set. Previously, the camera has handled all of that for you, but we did get quite a bit of feedback from mainly high-end post companies and DITs saying that they would like to handle that part of the process themselves. Well, now you can. So, at the start of this video, I'm just going to give a bit of a recap about Reveal and talk about the look file system that we developed for the Alexa 35, and then we'll get an, into the tutorial. So, if you'd like to skip ahead, that's totally fine with me, but let's get into it. When we introduced the Alexa 35, we also introduced a new color pipeline called Reveal. And Reveal basically offers you more accurate color reproduction, cleaner images, and a faster and easier workflow when grading both SDR and HDR images. To do that, Reveal brings together a new log curve, a new color space, a new color engine, a new debayering algorithm, and crucially for this video, a new look file format called the ALF. Now, we already have plenty of other tech talks out there about Reveal, including with our color science team, so I'd highly recommend giving those a watch. I'm just going to go through the updates that we've brought alongside SUP 1.2.1 for the Alexa 35 and the new version of the ARRI reference tool, Art version 1.4. With both of those, you get access to our new custom color management workflow for those people who want to use their own DRTs for monitoring on set. So let's get into it. So with the Alexa 35, a new look file format was introduced, which is called the ARRI Look File 4 or ALF4 for short. In ALF4, color management is split into two discrete steps. In the first step, that's called the Creative Modification Transform or CMT. That's basically where you add your creative intent. So the show LUT that you've been working on with a colorist, well, that would go at this step. Maybe it's a look that makes all your images slightly more cool because that's the kind of vibe that you're going for with your show. Well, the CMT step is basically taking the log C4 images from the camera and then affecting them and then resulting still in a log C4 image. So at this point, the color space hasn't changed and that's kind of what's different with these look files compared to the older system. In the second step, that's where we apply a display rendering transform or DRT for short. And yes, apologies, there will be a lot of acronyms in this video. And the DRT's job is to take that log C4 uh, file, those images in, in the log C4 color space, and then basically correct them so that they appear visually correct on the monitor that you're using. So that might be a DRT that goes from log C4 to Rec 709 or log C4 to an HDR color space like Rec 2020 PQ. Now, the fact that these two uh, different steps are separated is what makes the, the ALF4 file unique. And there are two key benefits here. One is that you can now adjust the, the intensity of your look in the camera. So you no longer need to load in a second LUT which has a less intense look. You just have your one CMT in that ALF4 file and then you can adjust the intensity in 10% steps. So for example, if you've made a LUT that you really like with your colorist, but you get on set and the client goes, wow, that's a bit too strong, then you can just dial it back in the camera, which is really useful. The other cool thing is because the CMT and the DRT are separate, we can use different DRTs for different monitoring pathways in the camera. So for example, you can have your show LUT and then you can have one SDI spitting out Rec. 709 for your onboard monitor perhaps and the camera will handle the DRT correctly for the SDI output that is going to that onboard monitor. But then SDI 2, well that might be going to an HDR monitor that you have in a DIT tent. And so the camera can also handle the HDR DRT, DRT separately and correctly. So you can have the one look file that's your creative intent, but two separate DRTs running on the camera at the same time. And that can be pretty useful on set. There are also some more benefits uh, to the ALF4 system for post, but we'll get into that in another video. 
For that second step, where we convert the image from the camera into the correct monitoring color space, the camera comes preloaded with a bunch of device rendering transforms. And those DRTs are also available to download on our website if you'd like to use them for other applications. And they come preloaded into a bunch of third-party software tools already. Those DRTs are extremely high quality and they also contain a lot of the special source that gives the Alexa 35 its special look. You can explore using other color management workflows in this tech talk which we already have out from Utsi who's our senior color scientist and he shows you what it looks like to use ACES color management or say DaVinci or Baselight color management as well so I highly recommend checking that out. The overall purpose of those display render transforms is to basically give the monitor the correct signal so that the light being output from the monitor looks correct to your eyes. Now the specifications for that monitoring output, they're really well defined, but the process of squeezing say the 17 stops of dynamic range from an Alexa 35 into the seven or so stops that a typical SDR Rec 709 monitor can actually output in terms of the amount of contrast that it has, well, that's a little more subjective. And that's where our image science team come in. So they've spent literally years designing the Log C4 display render transforms to be as pleasing, as cinematic, and as high quality as possible. But because there's a little bit of subjectivity in there, well, subjectivity opens the door to creative differences. So now with the custom color management workflow, we're going to allow users to either create their own DRTs if they wish, or to use those supplied by third party vendors such as ACES, Baselight or Resolve just to name a few. To support the custom color management workflow, we're introducing a new type of look file, the ALF4C. That's ARRI look file for custom. Now we've already beta tested this workflow with a bunch of DITs and post-production companies on really big jobs and the feedback has been really positive. So now it's time to bring it to you. You'll just need a copy of the ARRI reference tool version 1.4 to start. Let's get into it. Now, once you've got yourself a copy of the new ARRI reference tool version 1.4 or onwards, in the look room up here, down the bottom in the color grading panel, you'll see that we now have a toggle between ARRI color management and custom color management. And we have this little node tree over here. So let me just take you through the steps. Now, we start with a log C4 image out of the camera. The first step for manipulation is the ASC CDL section. And that's where you can adjust the slope, offset, power, or saturation, either with these tools, or you could be doing this with something, something such as live grade. The second step, well, that's where you add your creative modification transform, which is basically just a fancy word for your 3D LUT that you've made, perhaps your custom show LUT or one of the ARRI look library LUTs. When using ARRI color management, this is a log C4 to log C4 LUT without any sort of display render transform involved at all. The next step is where you will be able to soon add your own DRT, but again, if you're using the ARRI color managed workflow, then it's already handled for you by the camera. The DRTs are already in there and you can select a different DRT for each of the SDI outputs if you like. Now, when you change the color grading panel to custom color management, you'll see that the pipeline after the CMT step changes to custom color space, as this can be defined by you, but we don't actually really recommend that. We recommend sticking with log C4, and you are then required to supply your own DRTs. So the most common way that we think people will use the new custom color management workflow is to take their existing CMTs, which are log C4 to log C4 files, and then add their own custom DRTs. So with that thinking in mind, let's make our first ALF4C file. Now here in the first step, we can make some CDL adjustments. So I could either drag this around here in the wheel, or I could add in a custom value if I know what that is, for example, um, but I'm just gonna ignore that step for now. So now I need to load in my creative modification transform. So you can go down here where you have load 3D LUT CMT. Now this file can be either a 33 or a 65 point mesh cube. So in this next step, we have to supply two DRTs, one for SDR and one for HDR. Why is that? Well, you wouldn't actually need to do that, I guess, if you were just monitoring with either SDR or HDR via SDI, but the MVF2 will always be able to choose between SDR and HDR, and that assumedly is going to be connected to your camera. Um, so we need you to supply both. 
So therefore, I can go in here and I can select this cube that I have, which is my custom DRT to go from the log C4 images in this LUT2 Rec709. I then have to tell Art what the target color space is. So that would be Rec709 in this case. And then I add my HDR one, which is designed for PQ. And then I select the target color space of PQ. So once the DRTs are loaded and the color space selections are set, then the file names will turn green and my look file and LUT export options up here, the little buttons, they become available. And of course, I can preview what's going on in the GUI here. Now you can toggle this on and off so I can just look at the standard uh, Rec709 image and the look file and choose my different color space options here. And it's possible to use the same CMT, but view it with either ARRI Color Management or the new DRTs that you've installed with Custom Color Management with the little drop-down menu up here. Then to export an ALF4C file for the camera, hit this little swatch book icon. I have to set a name, which will then be displayed in camera, so don't be too silly, but I'm just gonna say Sean's Cool Look. And then we uh, have to, well, we can add two files. So this is kind of cool. You can add custom metadata files. Basically anything can be uploaded in this field as long as it's less than five megabytes and it's a zip file. This metadata section has been predominantly designed to describe the transformations that were used to develop the look that you have in here consisting of both the CMT and DRT LUTs. For example, as an ACES metadata file, an AMF, and additionally, if available, a CLF common LUT format file. So for example, for the SDR metadata file section, I'm gonna load in this AMF CLF combination in a zip, and then I'm gonna do the same thing here with the HDR one. All right, now that's done, I can save my look file. So obviously we all just chuck everything on the desktop. Congratulations, we have created an ALF4C file. Now, just to touch on that metadata thing once more, basically what you wanna put in the metadata typically, or what we think people will put in, is going to be basically instructions on how to reassemble the LUT that you've used to create your look. So both parts of the file, but also any steps that you might have had, for example, a description of your node tree and resolve when you're making a 3D LUT file so that it can then be recreated in post-production instead of just using the one LUT file that you had. Now that I have my ALF4C file, I can load it into the camera by placing it in the looks file on a USB that has been prepared in the camera. Then in the look menu of the camera, you can load in your new custom file and it will tell you that this is one that is using a custom color management workflow. It will also display what the target monitoring color spaces are, which is why it's important to select those correctly during the export. Now with this new custom color management workflow, experienced users will probably realize that it is possible to use a different working color space in between that CMT and DRT step. And yes, it is possible However, we really recommend that you stick with Log C4 where possible as Log C4 was designed to be able to hold the very large 17 stops of dynamic range that the Alexa 35 can capture. And if you use other working color spaces, it is likely that you might run into highlight clipping or other image artifacts. Now, if you need more technical information, we have updated the ALF4 white paper and you can find that along with the Log C4 specification and the how to create looks for Log C4 white paper. They are all in the technical download section which is found under learn and help on the website. You can also of course reach out to the Digital Workflow Solutions Group if you have any technical questions, they would love to hear from you and their email is digitalworkflow at ari.de. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you have any comments, throw them in the comment section down below and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.